Hello, we're Andy, the maniacal cinephile, and today, we're looking at Cobweb. But, I already did my dusting chores. No, little buddy, I'm reviewing a new horror movie that nobody went to see. And yet, you expect people to watch this review? Well, what if it's good? Word of mouth helps. You idiot! To make rent, I'm gonna have to rob another liquor store! Cobweb is a horror thriller directed by Samuel Bowden in his feature film debut. The screenplay was written by Chris Thomas Devlin, whose only other credit includes the 2022 requel of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Try anything and you cancel, bro. Don't do it, Leatherface! You'll lose your line of beauty products! Devlin's screenplay for Cobweb was included on the Blacklist in 2018, which is an annual survey of the most liked screenplays not yet produced. It was filmed in 2020 in Bulgaria, where a number of horror movies have been shot recently. Maybe it's time to move to Bulgaria. <laughs> Now on VOD, this was a film I wanted to see in the theater, but some wise guy decided to put it out the same weekend as Barbie and Oppenheimer. Speaking of bombs, it only made $3.7 million worldwide. However, now that the dust has settled, let's see if Cobweb is worth a watch, or if we should wipe it away with a broom. Eight-year-old Peter lives with his overbearing and emotionally distant parents, Carol and Mark. Having no social life, Peter is bullied at school by a kid named Brian. His name should be Billy, cause he's smashing pumpkins. To avoid another recess beatdown, Peter elects to stay inside and earn some sympathy from his substitute teacher, Miss Divine. I'd stay inside too, that Miss Divine is so fine. His parents forbid him to go trick-or-treating because a young girl went missing several years ago. Later that night, Peter is awoken by a knock coming from behind his bedroom wall. His parents insist that he must be imagining it. This one? Go around. <laughs> I cannot open the wall. Peter begins to talk with the mysterious entity, who claims that she was trapped in the wall by Peter's evil parents. Maybe he can make friends with the people under the stairs. Miss Divine becomes concerned after Peter paints a creepy picture of a figure asking for help. Peter painted this? Yes. I'd be concerned over his lack of talent. After a visit from Miss Divine, Peter is punished by his mother for making his delusions public. Like the time Evil stole a car and drove to Santa Clarita. Considered armed, all three of them, so that- Oh God, Evil! Where are we? What are we doing? Out of my way, asshole! Of traffic going the wrong way now. Jump oh, that median. Look at this, oh my God! Oh my god. That was close. Evil, I really have to go party. Shut up. I know how to lose him. Now gonna Okay, he's going in circles. What? I thought I'd take the kid to Magic Mountain. And propose to Alexandra Daddario. The girl in the wall convinces Peter to stand up for himself, so he pushes Brian down the stairs. That pumpkin had a name, and his name was Hector. After being expelled from school, Peter's parents ground him and send him to... the basement. They actually push aside the refrigerator to reveal a creepy basement door. 
That must be where they keep the good snacks. Down in the basement, Peter discovers a teddy bear in a pit covered by a grate. I wonder what he did to get grounded too. Is Peter crazy? Are his parents evil? Who is the girl in the wall? Is she real? A ghost? The missing girl? Will Miss Divine win Teacher of the Year? I was totally on board for the first hour of this movie and was loving it. Until it got to the twist that has more holes than Swiss cheese. It leaves more questions than answers. An hour of foreplay is fun. Until someone shits the bed. Cobweb stars Woody Norman, Lizzie Kaplan, Anthony Starr, and Cleopatra Coleman. Lizzie Kaplan plays Peter's mom, Carol, and she delivers a performance that is sus from the beginning. There's just something off about her. Uh, are you Peter's mom? Don't answer that without your lawyer. She plays the part well. After all, she did a decent job playing a young Annie Wilkes on Castle Rock. She's out of her cock -a duty mind. Woody Norman plays Peter and does a fine job carrying the film. Casting the wrong kid could easily make or break your horror film, and the young actor shows talent beyond his years. He easily captures the innocence and vulnerability of a troubled young boy in danger. The director is a fan of The Shining, and I definitely see some Danny Torrance in Peter. Anthony Starr plays Peter's father, Mark, and he brings his trademark intensity to the role. I think he needs eye drops. Better known as playing Homelander from The Boys, Starr is so good at putting on a smile while hinting at a darkness behind those eyes. Much like Tom Cruise. Cleopatra Coleman plays Miss Divine, Peter's kind and caring substitute teacher that every kid should want. She immediately senses that Peter is being bullied and that something is off about his home life. Her role in the story is Dick Halloran meets Miss Honey. Dick Honey, my nickname in high school. So the girl claims to be Sarah, Peter's sister, who was locked in the walls by their parents after they didn't want her anymore. You know what? I didn't know that was an option. Sarah convinces Peter that his parents are planning to kill her and that he'll end up in the wall next. To avoid sharing her fate, he poisons his parents. But before she dies, Carol warns Peter... Do not let her out. I mean, do not let her out. She's been known to jump on the company. Now free, Sarah cackles and crawls out, seemingly inhuman. Like most sisters. With her super long spider infested hair and spider like movements, she's a mix of Rapunzel and Sadako. Sarah reveals to Peter that she has been manipulating him and that she resents Peter's normal life. Getting the shit kicked out of him at recess. Speaking of bullies, when Brian and his cousins show up to get revenge, they are brutally killed by Sarah. Nobody threatens her brother, but her. You'd think living in the wall would leave Sarah weak and malnourished. But no, she has super strength and the ability to crawl on the ceiling. She can rip someone's head clean off and throw them around with ease, but can't punch a hole in the wall. This ending doesn't need any more holes. Is Sarah human? Supernatural? A monster? A figment of Peter's imagination? The movie abruptly ends, and the lack of answers leaves an unsatisfying ending. Like when you pay for a massage. That's just a massage. <laughs> 
French director Samuel Bowden created a dark, atmospheric setting. The eerie bedroom, halls, and basement of the home serve as a metaphorical representation of the young boy's fears and doubts. Parents can be shady, like when they tell you not to jump on the bed, but then you can hear them doing it. The cinematography was my favorite part of the movie. Cinematographer Philip Lozano's lighting, use of shadows, and camera work amplified the horror and fairy tale imagery seen throughout the film. When breaking into a house, always carry lube. The script by Chris Thomas Devlin cleverly weaves together elements of mystery and suspense. The gradual unraveling of the plot kept us engaged and guessing. Until the ending went bonkers for the hell of it. When it comes to scares, there's only one truly scary scene in the movie. And that is when Peter is having a nightmare about his parents. Movie needed more of that. Did she trip down the stairs in the dark? His mother Carol reminded me of Coraline and her other mother. Other mother? I didn't know Coraline's mom was a lesbian. What? <laughs> if you think of it like a modern grim fairy tale, then I'm more forgiving. You have to suspend your disbelief when dealing with witches living in candy houses. But the ending of Cobweb requires mental gymnastics to dodge the plot holes, and the reveal doesn't feel earned. So, should you get caught in this cobweb? Not quite. With its mysterious plot, strong performances, sound design, atmosphere, and creepy imagery, Cobweb was firing on all cylinders. But the conclusion is illogical and fails to bring any closure to the story. We've been Andy, the maniacal cinephile. Thanks for liking and subscribing. We'll see you next time.